you, he said Snowden is obviously a spy. Yeah, obviously. The word obviously definitely better than an argument. No, spies give information to other intelligence agencies. This is not very brilliant of you to think. It's obviously a spy. No. He's obviously a whistleblower because he revealed the information to the world. He could have just sold that information to the Chinese and lived in Hong Kong as a rich man the rest of his life. That's what spies do. Well, unseen perfidy. Hmm. Uh, I guess I can't talk to you in the first person anymore for at least a while. Unseen perfidy demanded that I denounce uh, Franks in a video that he then took down before I saw it, but then in comments reiterated it. And then as I was explaining why I wouldn't even denounce Pol Pot, it's not really an appropriate thing for grown up people to ask of each other. It's pointless and goes nowhere. He should judge me based on how I treat him. It's ridiculous, you know, should I, he must denounce Joe McCarthy before I will talk to him, whatever. Um, so I had already, before that, made these notes on the video he made to me in reply. Now, I will say one thing. Unseen Perfidy has become the only person besides in Manham, the only other person besides in Manham, to block me, unblock me, and block me again. So maybe he'll be the second person to unblock me after that and block me again. And Gary's done it a lot of times, so it will, we will never know if anybody surpasses. Gary is the essentially infinite number of times doing that, though I'm sure it's actually finite, but who knows? Could have been a lot of times by now. Um, <clears throat> and also, you know, it's like the whole thing, I wouldn't do denunciations for anybody, uh, but I have no problem with Franks, but I'm not going to vouch for all of his videos. I haven't even watched him, but I have no problem with it. But, you know, being asked to denounce, to denounce Franks when, you know, I saw Ella's first videos to Skeptic, uh, quite a many of them. And you guys are calling her disingenuous and blah, 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 and granny this and heavy traffic's case. And, you know, y'all have done different things, but it's like, she's just a political participant. She has information. You skirt it. You could say, well, I have to because you, you guys won't denounce Franks. Two plus two still means you're running away from the arguments. I mean, I, I haven't called you that, that kind of name or anything, but whatever. But I am going to go through the video comments notes my notes rather first of all early on he was talking about because I had said well probably the Russians have this information right if someone as low level as Snowden can get it and Manning then probably there's people in place from Ro Russian spy agencies that can get that if such low level people can get in there they could probably easily be placed in there. We know that. And not just them, but the Chinese and various people that have spy organizations. And then that information's out there. Couldn't we think that? Couldn't we, you know, guess that from what we know about spying? And, uh, and he played the, well, I don't know. I don't have the clearance to know that kind of thing. But see, this is the whole point about Snowden bringing the information out, people. A couple years ago, even though I knew and the Drake thing, oh, and we know, we know this NSA spy, and people would go, well, I don't know, I don't have the client of clearance to know if, if we they're actually doing it. Then it comes out, and they're like, well, we knew that all along, who cares? Well, we already knew all along that, yeah, the Russians have infiltrated our spy organizations, so they know more about what our spy organizations are doing than us. Surely we know that. And when we're talking about the black budget, yeah, it's obvious they would know something that high level. But regardless, they definitely know more than the American people. We could assume that, right? Because we know hardly anything. They, they spend millions or billions infiltrating us, too. They've learned some things about it. You could go, no, they know we have a really good organization. It never gets infiltrated. But we know, right? It, he and I know from reading the papers and whatnot that, that they have successfully every once in a while throughout our history infiltrated us. Uh, the Russians and every other person that wants to, right? We know that, just like we knew the NSA was spying on us before the Snowden leaks. We know that, we know, unless it's convenient to deny it. Then we still know and we get to deny it. So, you're like, well, I, I'm dismayed. 
I have a lack of clearance to speak of such things. See, people would say things like that about the NSA spies on it. No, that's overblown. I have the lack of clearance. Yeah, probably something, but you know, more like a no big deal than a big deal. And besides, I don't have any clearance. And afterwards, you're like, what do you mean we knew? We knew. Why are you guys so surprised? People knew. People know. They like it. So his lack of clearance is like, uh, okay, yeah, he has a dis he's dismayed that he has a lack of clearance. Well, to me that means I need more leaks. I don't like, I don't like not knowing. Lack of clearance, who knows? Because I do know. Yes, they have people in our NSA. The Russians have plenty of people in our SA at way higher levels than Snowden, so I'm assuming they could hire people like Snowden. I know that. You don't until the next leak when you have to admit it and you get to go, oh wait, this time you won't, get to go, hey, I knew that all along because you'll have made a video going, I don't know, because I don't have to claim to. Yeah, but Snowden brings that and then you have to know, huh? That's what I like. That's why I like the leaks. Because these kind of arguments where, oh, I, you have to denounce people and I don't know, who knows, I don't have claims. I don't know what the, what the Russians specifically know. Yeah, well, neither do I. So I don't know, as I said, if they have the passkey. I'm not going to assume that. I don't know which of our emails they have, but I know they have some of it. I know they know what was going on. Now, do they know about the NSA passkey thing? Probably. Do they actually have the passkey algorithm, which is what I will call it? Who knows? I like to think, no, they don't. Probably naive. It's been around six years or something, probably, to uh, this, this project, so... They would have time that when the NSA finally got it installed in 2010 or whatever, that they would know that. I probably. I know they probably do have that as well as I knew that the NSA was spying on our emails. The only difference is that one of those you have to admit now and the other you don't. And I have the feeling, I'm not doing so well on the third person thing, but. Anyway, I have a feeling that Unseen Perfidy, uh, if Snowden hadn't forced that out, would be poo-pooing that as well. I don't know. Yeah, it makes sense. There's some sense. But who knows? We don't have clearance. Let's see. So, I'll tell you one thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure. It's beyond common sense to think that spy agencies like the Russians and the Chinese know our, the big number of the black budget, the black ops budget. I, it's obvious. That has to go through so many hands and departments and stuff. Somebody. Somebody shares that. But we don't know, not until the next leak. So what we're discussing again was not whether I'm right about that, but whether we should have more leaks. Well, yeah, we could, we could find out if I'm correct. Wouldn't it be fun to find out I wasn't correct? Yeah, to do that, you'd have to get, oh, you know, have to leak everything, huh? So I don't know if they know the universal key, but I do know it's out there. It's been invented such that it could be known, and our encryption is supposed to be protected by mathematics. Instead, it's not. It's protected by, we'll keep a secret from everybody but Snowden and Manning and all everybody else. So, um, I think it is to keep the public in the dark, because the public would not support these things. The public has been kept in the dark about our foreign policies, huge aspects of it um, uh, in the past because they would not support those things. Uh, th th they were being told that we were spreading democracy to the Philippines. They did not pay attention. They should have paid more attention. People like Mark Twain, people that wanted to know knew what was going on, but basically they were happy to accept the lie. So it's still a lie that, that our foreign policy uh, is something entirely else than people that look into it know that it is and and the whole ruse is yeah because the people the regular people and the ice cream and uh, apple pie and all that they just like thinking we're good people but they actually want to be good people and once they find out what's going on they don't, they can't feel so good and it makes them cynical that's what's going on and the only way to solve it it's not keeping better secrets from those people, but to stop doing this shit with their money. It's no brainer, really. I think that the government would be opposed if they tried to say what they were doing. I don't think 
that a politician could have been elected saying, I'm going to spy on all your emails. I don't think so. <clears throat> and since it's a democracy, I think I have a right to demand that I know what I'm voting for. The government is not my parent, and there is no custodial role, whatever. They're here to protect. No, 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 it's a service. You, know, you can protect me by being my bank, and I want to know what you're doing to protect my money. I don't want a secret. I need to know. It can't be like, well, we don't tell you. And all the banks are like, well, we don't tell you because it's not safe to tell you what we do with your money. Sorry. But what about, won't there be codes and some procedures? No, in that case, they'll say, well, there are some codes and procedures in addition. Super duper, and they work kind of like this. We don't want to tell you every detail because they're very clever. But just totally in the dark. Like, I don't need to know if we have nuclear weapons or... Because that was the thing they considered classifying. You know, it's a democracy, so I want to know. But since it's a democracy, I don't see how someone like Unseen Perfidy has the right to take that from me. To take that knowledge from me. As far as I know, the market and, and the market of ideas in a democracy works on... Uh, you know, buyer beware and well-informed uh, consumers. I don't see how you can argue against a well-informed consumer and then you're going to say, well, the consumers aren't well-informed because they're idiots and they don't want to be well-informed. But we're not asking that. We're saying, do you want to do something that would inform them more or not? At one point he says, the things my friends think. Unseen perfidy doesn't know any of my friends. You guys are intellectual acquaintances, right? Possibly colleagues if I work on a project with you, that's rare. You're intellectual acquaintances. I'm sorry, you don't know any of my friends, Unseen Perfidy. My friends. You, and you don't also don't get to say who my friends are. But you agreed with them. I'm not friends with all the people that I agree with politically. No, and I actually am friends with people I disagree with politically sometimes. Go figure, how could that possibly be possible? It's like weird. So you don't say who my friends are. You don't know my friends. And you're a fool if you're going to assume that people I agree with are my friends. Maybe you need more friends. Maybe you don't know what friends are. So my friends think all of the above. I have friends more conservative than you by a million miles. How could I be friends with them? Well, they're not liars, basically. Honesty is my main thing. And also strength of character and just strong, being able to handle stuff and not being a whiny bitch about petty things. Friend candidates there. Basically, um, they are inefficient, and I and I, it's too bad we're not you're not going to talk to me anymore, and I'm blocked because, uh, you know, you do have a way of going through point by point, and I love to do that, and I like to disagree with people, and we have both of those things, but unfortunately, you're an emotionally immature person. You don't understand why demanding denunciations is not okay, and you should just judge a person based on the person when you're having a conversation. It's not an intellectual way. If you're arguing with this person, if you are an academic and you don't like that person, and you think they insulted you, don't say, hey, stop, so, stop, Sep, wait. First, denunci denounce that dude. You're a denounce to think that. Um, and, you know, your thing about how did he get the information, here's, here's part of the problem with the security. Uh, there's no way they're going to stop the sysadmins from having access to the information. And there's no way they're going to control the sysadmins. This is a subculture I know well. And they might be able to use money to clam up a lot of them, but that's not going to really work. A few of them will bring it to the public, and even more of them will just make money off of having it. Because a lot of sysadmins have a god complex. The fact that they can't go anywhere is what attracts them to learning that skill in the first place. 
Uh, this guy didn't even have a high school degree, and I have nothing against that, but you can't tell me that's a high standard when you're paying people what they, I've heard, supposedly is making a couple hundred grand a year. No high school, they can't find anybody that has a college degree in computers that took classes in computer security or something like this. They can't find a, a, a law graduate that wants $250,000 a year for doing intelligence work. That's a sign right there of something wrong is going on. You know, how do you get the clearance? Too many people to give clearance and, the, and then they're privatizing and contracting out. But checking. Used to be the FBI did that kind of thing. I'm sure they still do, but they, 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 there isn't enough FBI to do it, so they just farm it out. Farm it out. You don't suppose that might be because people want contracts. Well, I guess until someone leaks a memo saying they're doing it just to make money off the contracts and then we'll have to know and the uninformed fools will have to wonder what's going on. You, he said Snowden is obviously a spy. Yeah, obviously. The word obviously definitely better than an argument. No, spies give information to other intelligence agencies. This is not very brilliant of you to think. It's obviously spy. No. He's obviously a whistleblower because he revealed the information to the world. He could have just sold that information to the Chinese and lived in Hong Kong as a rich man the rest of his life. That's what spies do. Then again, we don't have security clearance, so we don't know what would happen or what's obvious mentions that Russia is not the only adversary. Yeah, I know that I use them as like a variable X, you know, for people that obviously have the capability. There's the Chinese, and there's Israel, and there's every European country, and there's even North Korea. Because they've got millions and billions to spend on this, just get a few people in there. The Russians are a good example because they've been doing it for so long with us that you just know they have embedded people, high-level people that can hire other people into positions like sysadmins that they know are sensitive points, unless they're idiots. Maybe they, maybe they don't know they're sensitive points. These people inside. And around 1334, he actually asked something about, you know, how could you make a distinction between wartime and peacetime? Like, what's okay? Because I was saying, well, some of this, you know, in wartime, obviously. He's like, how do you make a distinction? And I'm like, dude, this is why I have a problem with this country. People don't think you can make a distinction between wartime and peacetime and so they don't and the rest of us can't because it's perpetual war and I can see that's not peacetime how could you make a distinction I don't know how how come we are unable to make a distinction when they have for thousands of years during plenty of war understood the difference somebody should read some speeches by Ike and learn what he was saying about the military industrial complex and perpetual war sadly America has fallen into that and we've perpetuated war and now we've been doing it for quite a long time because pretty much historically it's not that controvertible that we fought a revolution it bled into an Indian war fought that one fought that one we moved into the Pacific we moved into European theater, which was the global theater, and we've been there ever since. So, I know a distinction between wartime and peacetime. And uh, if we were going to talk, we could get into that, but of course that would definitely be value-based difference there, that inability to perceive the difference.